Hi, everyone. This is Christina Barr. Welcome to Black Tea News. And today we're going to be talking about the Coca-Cola scandal, which uh, based on my uh, Facebook feed, there's a lot of people who already know about this. Um, I did see the story when it dropped last week. Um, someone from the walkaway movement uh, broke the story when a whistleblower sent them some uh, screenshots. Some people did not believe her uh, when she posted them, but Coca-Cola did come out and uh you know, uh, confirm that they were doing this. Uh, companies are referring to this, you know, as like sensitivity training. Christopher Wallace on the debate sp- stage uh, referred to it as sensitive training, which the president, a uh, former President Trump, uh, rightly said they're teaching people to hate white people. And Joe Biden was like, they're not doing that. What are you talking about? And of course, Trump was right. And um, for those of you who are more interested in the nitty gritty policy stuff, and uh, I encourage you to a look at this stuff and pay attention to this cultural stuff because uh, they're not just teaching this at Coca-Cola. They're doing it at major companies. They're doing it in our government. They're doing it um, with contractors, with people for our government. They're doing it in our schools. So uh, this stuff is trying to eke out and become more mainstream and we have to pay attention to it and we have to fight it because um, it's not reverse racism. It's just regular good old fashioned racism. Okay. So really quickly before we dive into it, uh, if you like videos like this, make sure you like or subscribe to the channel or share it wherever kind of platform you might be on. Um, and make sure that you visit Black Tea News, check out articles that we write. If you would like to be a supporter, um, you can go ahead and uh, leave a gift if you would, you want to, you know, see content like this continue and to grow and spread. And also, please check out our store. You might find something that you genuinely, genuinely love. And that'll be good for me. That'll be good for you. So go ahead and go to blackteanews.com. Okay, so um, Coca-Cola had a training where they were teaching people to be less white. Legit, that that's what happened. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and this is stuff that you can um, get online. The author of A White Fragility, um, which I was embarrassed to see people share that trash as if it was going to help society. Uh, <laughs> I don't, this summer of, um, wokeness and, uh, white guilt and people just barfing out confessions of their racism, virtue signaling is, was just really disappointing on a lot of levels. Cause it's like one, um, I, I didn't know you're racist. So, so one, that that's sad that you admitted that, and then I feel like our relationship together was a, uh, you know, had this deep dark lie between us that you secretly hated me because I'm black. <laughs> so like, how am I supposed to feel about that? And on the other hand, if you're just confessing that you're a racist, uh, be, to to get points or something, you're an insincere trash monster. Like I know people don't like when I use trash. Um, get really offended by that but uh <laughs> uh racism is bad and virtue signal doing the whole virtue signal thing is is not good either um but back to this um white uh be less white thing first of all I do want to say if you are a black Republican and you voted for Trump and you woke up the next morning to find that you are no longer black because of the curse that Joe Biden put upon you, um, all you have to do is drink a bottle of Coke. Um, it works. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. You will be cured. Okay. Um, Thus, the first screenshot is confronting racism, understanding what it means to be white, channeling what it means to be racist. Um, to be less white is to be less oppressive because no other groups in history have, have been oppressive. Um, no other groups um, have gone to go like annihilate anyone. This didn't happen like the Turks. You know, they didn't do that with, um, you know, there was no Ottoman Empire you know, that went ahead to try to oppress people. Just, just nobody, just nobody else did anything like this. Um, it's just an exclusively white, uh, thing. Just white people, you know, um, the whitest of the milky whitest Europeans. And they brought that over to America. Just oppressiveness. Africans don't aren't oppressive when they go and take over other tribes and other stuff that they, the white devil brought that over. (laughs) 
just ridiculous. Be less arrogant. Like other races aren't arrogant. Um, to be less certain because I'm sure that's what you want in your employees for them to be uncertain, um, and anxious and, um, <laughs> <laughs> just hyperventilating fools. Like, did you get those reports done? Like, I, I, I just don't know. Um, be less defensive. Um, like, for example, if someone says, hey, you're a racist and you're like, no, I'm not. D dude, you can't do that. That is that is whiteness. You cannot be defensive. You cannot defend yourself. Like, if I punch you in the face right now, don't you even block? That is racist. <laughs> don't you dare defend yourself. Like, on any level, that is oppressive for you to even try. You take your punch in the face or you are racist. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I know I'm having too much fun with this. Um, uh, be less ignorant. Um, be more humble. Uh, listen, believe, break with apathy, break with white solidarity. You know, the thing about that I do notice that white people seem to be more in solidarity about is the fact that they're sick of being called racist for no reason. Um, <laughs> I, I see a lot of people like there's people who still confessing their sins and buying into the uh, the, the nonsense, especially that was like so prevalent during the summer, but there's a lot of people who are just like, I'm, I'm sick of this nonsense. Like I find solidarity. I see it there. Um, the, the listen and believe, um, and, and maybe I'll have to do like a separate video regarding this, but I think, uh, what was that saying with trust, but verify, um, and you can listen to people's experiences about what they've been through and, um, and maybe there's some validation to how they feel. But as I saw, especially like during the summer, well, just an observation through life, but particularly when people were just like confessing all the racism that they've seen in life, things I've seen from like, no, from like firsthand, secondhand account of their explanations of things. I'm like, that's totally twisted. And <laughs> I'm like, um, there's a reasonable explanation uh, to that, that doesn't involve racism. And, um, just seeing people, spew out their skewed perspective on this lens of, of race rather than accepting, I don't know, that your behavior, like people didn't like you maybe because of your behavior. Maybe you were suspended from school because you were a drug dealer and not because the principal was racist. And, um, that's a reference to a real thing. Um, like for example, there was a story about, um, a picture going around for, for Walmart locking up, uh, images well not images they were locking up products from like uh black hair products and people were upset saying that this was racist uh and uh if someone I knew shared it and my sister was like no they lock up products that get stolen and he got mad and he just blocked her and another you know relative had to tell them like no that that's true that's why they do it and my sister's still blocked by the way um <laughs> by this individual and um and people were like passing that around like with some big racist thing like no they they it varies from what stores lock up I worked retail like I had to lock up things I worked in an electronics store we had to lock I had to lock up flash drives and it was super inconvenient when you're trying to make a sale and you got to go in the back and get like a 16 gig flash drive because idiots out on the floor like to steal and you know it's nobody likes to do it it's really inconvenient but you know a shampoo like Tresemme that is really cheap that they mass produce is you can take that at a loss that you can't afford with uh, a shampoo that isn't produced at mass that is more expensive. So if you are black and you want your hair care products and it's in an area where people might be stealing it a lot, uh, it's inconvenient when you go there and you need it out the case. It's inconvenient for the person who works there to go get it out the case. Um, but it's not racism. It's just a matter of, and, and those cases are expensive. Nobody wants to just up and buy them. It's just at the end of the day, that is more cost effective for them than just allowing them to keep losing those products. Cause, um, the, the next step is just to not carry them. And that happens with all kinds of products. It just depends on the area. If you go to DC, they have a lot of like, everyday convenience things that you would need that are locked up and stuff. And, um, and I was had to wait a little, a little while for the, um, someone to come and, and get me something that I need for my dad while I was in DC. And, 
but but that's just because that's what's what's stolen people need to realize there's not always some nefarious racism plot behind you so to listen and believe sometimes people are wrong sometimes people are wrong and you can listen and I, you could say you know gosh people hate when you say something like i i i get how you feel or, or, or i i um, see that how you feel that way when you but it um I, I think you need to use a Socratic method and break down and, and, and kind of analyze if someone is, is actually being wronged in a victim of racism, because you need to stand by and fight with that person. But not everybody who's telling you a sob story is, is seeing things correctly. Maybe there, there's a reason why they feel validated in their feelings. And maybe there's something to that. Like, um, the like AOC being scared at the Capitol, but there is a different context when you realize that she was not in that building when it was being raided at the time. Not that her feelings didn't matter, but um, it's important for you to know the kind of the context of the situation. So my advice is don't just listen and believe. By you can listen and but ver- verify. You it's it's okay to ask questions. Um, they might get defensive, but uh. Uh, and they might show their whiteness <laughs> by being defensive. Um, but, but trust, but, but verify, don't get suckered. There's a lot of people who, who were suckers this, this past summer. It, and it just like sickened me how much people were just suckers, like all around the board. Um, but let's go on. Uh, the next slide, the U S and other Western nations, white people are socialized to feel that they are inherently superior because they are white. Research shows that by the age three to four, children understand that it is better to be white. Um, I, I I don't know what age I'm supposed to learn that because it hasn't happened um, yet for me. Um, I have a nephew who's five. And uh, I think when he was about in this three to four age range, um, he thought everyone was white. He thought all people were white because he watched Coco and he realized that under our skin, our bones are white. So he just thought everybody was just one race and we are one race. <laughs> and that's just how he saw the world as a, as a child. I, he, he doesn't care about those things. I don't think I cared about those things that, or, or realize that I was some, some, some kind of disadvantage or anything like that. And I'm not at some kind of dif- disadvantage. Are you crazy? Um, and the next slide is just try to be less white. <laughs> I guess that maybe that's how it, how it ends. So, so, um, there's a whole course on that, um, that, that businesses share. And like I said, um, president Trump did try to address these things at the end of his administration. Um, and they, he, he did, I believe an executive order. Um, well it was, he, he did do something. I believe it was an executive order to say that these companies that get, um, that within the government, you can't do these, um, you know, these, this, uh, critical race theory training, and, and you also uh, can't get government contracts if you submit to this sort of stuff. So there's big companies that would get government contracts. So that was a, a good way, a good start to what he could control. And uh, but there are people like Joe Biden, people like Kamala Harris, who placate to this crowd, who uh, live off of this racial division. Um, don't tell me Kamala Harris doesn't because she's I mean, she pushed that Jesse Smollett thing. That was totally 100% uh, just garbage from the beginning. Um, I'm sorry if you fell for that. <laughs> but it was obviously um, a lie. And Kamala Harris is not a stupid woman. Um, so um, she she knew. She knew. Um, but uh, people get... Um, they push this sort of stuff because it profits them, especially during this election cycle with Trump versus Biden, because uh, they were trying to in the New York Times after they started stop covering Russia. They admitted that that, you know, that they were going to start covering race in America and that was going to be their focus. And um, the idea, I believe, was to make America seem as awful as possible. They came out with a 1619 project and um and that Trump would just kind of be the face of that. And he'd be the demon that we'd need to strike down. And the only way to heal America or to start that healing would be to elect Joe Biden um, and Kamala Harris. And even before it was just 
uh, Joe and Kamala, it was, you know, you have to, you have to elect someone who like literally was for like segregation <laughs> in order to heal the racist country. So, um, that's just the ridiculous world that we live in. And it, I thought it was, I think one of the most shameful things that Chris Wallace did at that debate was to refer to this as sensitivity training. Uh, he's a smart man. He should know better. He's a news anchor on Fox freaking news. So, um, I'm, I'm sure he knew better, but he framed it that way because, it was a better opportunity to make Trump look bad. Not that he needed a lot of help during that debate. It was not his finest hour. And, um, and Joe Biden pretending like that didn't happen. Now, Joe Biden is pretty clueless, but, um, I, he should at least know that what's going on with that. And if he doesn't, especially with all of the crazy progressives that he had on staff, um, he, doesn't deserve the position that he has. <laughs> um, but we can argue that on a lot of different fronts. So um, Coca-Cola is not the only people doing this. Um, there are schools that are in um, incorporating like Black Lives Matter sort of um, education guidelines as well. And um, those are even worse than the kind of those slides. I mean, it's still kind of the same vein. I can't believe that all these people gave money and just made uh, white fragility such a huge <laughs> book. Uh, and, and from this white liberal lady telling, you know, white people how they need to confess their sins and how racist and awful they are and just treating black people like I have no sense of agency. And you guys actually said, yeah, let's make that a bestseller. And, and let's, let's give this privileged white lady who who's the only one who can teach us about our sins, just like $20,000 a pop, or it may be more when she teaches courses on, on racism. It's just silly where she tells white people not to cry because it'll trigger, uh, black people for, <laughs> because they'll think of times when white tears were weaponized to get people lynched and just crazy stuff like that. I'm, um, we, we did a really big disservice. <laughs> we keep still doing it. So if, if my suggestion is if you are part of a company that teaches any of this garbage, um, then you need to fight back. Oh, I think you need to sue if you can. Um, and you need to pay attention to what your kids are learning in school because this is the sort of stuff that they are also pushing and filling their heads with garbage with. So, uh, this is the world we unfortunately are living in right now. And, um, we need voices and people who will fight back. And, uh, and I thank you for joining in to Black Tea News. And I'll keep in the fight. And hopefully you'll help me keep in the fight. And uh, please like and share and subscribe. And visit blackteanews.com. And if you want to uh, help out, you know, give a donation. Or you want to um, get, you know, get a product or something. Uh, go ahead and do that. And I would very much appreciate it. And we'll keep fighting the fight. Good fight together, guys. And you guys have a blessed day.